talented artist. And oh, thank so you. you said, yeah, you said you're self-taught and you're interested in medical illustration. Is that right? And where are you planning yeah. to study? In, in the UK. Um, okay. I haven't pinpointed um, the school. I know there's, there's this UCL. There are very few schools that offer medical illustration in the UK, actually. So mm -hmm. it's, it's between either Glasgow School of Art or UCL. But mm -hmm. you know, it's mainly going to be postgraduate studies. OK. Uh, yeah. What's your background in, in the medical field? You, is it that you're interested in being a medical illustrator without experience? Or, or do you have some type of biology or, or uh, medical study or practice behind you? OK, I did my first degree in medical physiology. But um, just after after college, I decided to pursue my passion for design. So I've been working in multimedia for since two thousand and seven. Mm -hmm. So I I I can use three um, D applications. I can do motion graphics. I do three D design and all of that. So I, I've just been thinking like, oh, I have this this degree why and I still love science but I love design a lot so I'm trying to see how I can combine both of them right to, you know yeah yeah well that's but great I haven't really worked in the medical fields okay so but you have so you have yeah. some training though so that you understand what you're drawing yeah. You have a, a, some area of education yeah, specialization, yes? Because that helps. Yeah. It's not the most important, yeah. but it really does help to have some science background to, because okay. medical illustration is uh, where it's, it's special and important in that when the person drawing or creating a 3D model, whatever it is, we take our knowledge of whatever biological system it is, whatever you happen to be illustrating, you take the knowledge of that and put that together with your knowledge and skill of drawing, design, 3D modeling, whatever it is, so that we can get the most complete okay. picture. Because unfortunately, okay. you know, um, photography doesn't always work because we can't necessarily see everything we know about a specimen, right? So okay. um, some training and so picking an area to start mm -hmm. your medical illustration where you have some knowledge, um, and that really helps if you do have some, some degree, even if it's only a bachelor's degree, that shows that you have some understanding uh, of what you're doing and you may want to start in a certain specialization where you yeah. really understand what you're doing at least yeah. until you you know build up a name a little bit for yourself and start to get referrals for what you're doing um, okay. so that's an asset to have that and so that whoever is hiring you to see that you do have some education uh in okay. understanding right now the other yeah. thing that's great that you have the understanding of how to create 3d models and animations because that's this particular um, so yeah. specialty within medical illustration. It's being used more and more today. Um, okay. So that even though you have hand skills too, but this is going to be really good for your career that you have some hand skills as well as the computer modeling skills. Um, so okay. I have worked with students before in medical illustration, helping them build their skill and in, in the hand skill and understanding how to okay. communicate their ideas, at least enough to get a okay. good portfolio to either get work or to study further. And I think for you, it sounds like studying okay. further really is a good idea. Um, it's a very specialized field, and you're okay. right, there's not a lot of schools that teach it, are there? But it's good you found yeah. a couple. Yeah. Um, what have you found out that they're asking okay. for in examples? Do they tell you what they want to see in the portfolio? 
Not really. The, o- the only school I saw that gave a few examples was um, Johns Hopkins. That was in the US. Yeah, um, that's a good school. They had uh, yeah. a lot of drawings, um, figure drawings, and all of that. Yeah. But it's expensive. Okay. Very expensive. I'm not sure yeah. I can afford it. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things you can do, even if the schools you're applying to don't have a lot of guidance in what to put in your portfolio, you could okay. look at other schools that maybe you okay. choose not to go to, but that give you some indication of what they want to see as an idea okay. of what to put in, right? Okay. So you can look at what does John okay. Hopkins ask for and say, oh, well, if they're asking for that and I put that in my portfolio for the schools in the UK, hey, maybe that's going to show me some ideas of what would be good. What I could tell you is your your drawing skill is good, and I think you have a few good examples that can be included. But I would, um, hey, do you know when you need to apply for? What's the deadline for the portfolio? The application. Oh, right now, um, because you know, okay, I've I've just been a little bit skeptical about my drawing abilities. Like I felt like, oh, I love to draw, but do I draw really well? So when I saw your website, I was like, okay, let me use the opportunity to gauge how good I am. Then um, I'm looking at applying towards the September intake. So I, I have okay. between now and September to do my applications. Okay, so but yeah, that depends every, on how much I need to learn. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, because what you want to find out for September, like a, check yeah. with those schools when the the application is due and when the portfolio is due. Okay. Because uh, every okay. country does it a little bit differently. For example, in North America, okay. if you want to go to school for September, the portfolio, okay. the applications are due in the fall or early winter. The portfolios okay. are due as early as February and as late as April. That you can't oh. apply last minute, not in North America, maybe in the UK you can. So double check on that to know and to okay. find out for sure when are, is the application due and when is the portfolio due. That okay. helps you know how much time you have to further develop your skills, right? Okay. Um, now let's have a look. I'm going to go and, yeah, and get the screen share of okay. um, some of your drawings, and okay. we'll look at those together because you have that question of, are you good enough? Well, uh, Rex, I think you're good enough. You draw very beautifully, and for being self-taught, my gosh, you're great. So you don't worry about that. Uh, okay. So... Yeah, I think you definitely have the skill you need uh, as far as being, you know, good, right? You, you've got a good eye and great technique. Uh, there's probably specific things that you're going to need, though, to be able to get accepted into a medical illustration program so okay. that there's going to be specific pieces you should include that maybe okay. you already have and some maybe you have to make, um, okay. but your skill level is there. For sure. Okay. I want to look, okay. and I'll tell you why. I'm going to go look at your uh, pieces. So just one moment to go find it. Okay. Uh, hang on a second. And just give me a moment to get this. Huh. I can do it this way. So now you just emailed me these things in your via email. I have I don't have them uh, downloaded, so that we're just seeing okay. them on your on okay. my email screen. <laughs> okay. um, can you see your pictures there? The drawings you did? Yeah, I can. Okay. So one second, I just want to go back to that screen. So, so tell me, do you still see it? Yeah, I can. Yeah. Okay. So you know, I can see here. Look, like you can draw a person really well. 
like that's really well done and even your shade and shadow the, the fact that you can see how we have a highlight and then it suddenly gets very dark there's uh, something um, some people call the third line or you see where there's that darker band yeah. uh, it can be called the penumbra or the um, the core shadow most beginners they don't see that you did like that's a high level learning thing in drawing most people don't see reflected light and how shade and shadow really work and you did see that plus okay. all the features are well drawn well proportioned so that yeah. is a really good indication here too you know really good contrast on your still life drawing um, okay. you know there's a few it's a bit strange in that it looks as if like you can see the bottom of the banana but then the bowl it looks so deep like it makes me wonder there's something a little bit askew with that still life drawing but still okay. quite well done okay. uh, especially compared to a lot that I see um, so I see that your pencil drawings are good and okay. Now these watercolors. I, I did them in acrylic. Oh, these are acrylic paintings. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, they're they're not um they're okay, but I don't know that they're professional quality to put in a medical illustration portfolio. This this okay. one your your pencil work is really good, and you know. Yeah really excellent and that's one of the things that's good in medical illustration to show that you can draw really well that you can control your media with such precision I can see um, like you're getting great results even though I could see how I could help you improve your pencil shading technique even more it's a little bit streaky and so I have a video that teaches about good pencil technique okay. but still excellent and look at this guy. Oh, this is fantastic. See, this should definitely go in your portfolio. Really okay. good. So okay. I like your drawings. I think your drawings should be included. I think your paintings, they, there's a big, I mean, they're nice compositions. The painting technique is not great, though. And okay. they seem like a different person did them. You know? <laughs> <laughs> they, they seem more... They seem more amateur. <laughs> the others look so professional, and these ones not so much. Like okay. these ones look like somebody in maybe high school did them, and where the others look very professionally done. <laughs> so, yeah, don't put in the paintings. Okay. Um. There, I mean, there's some nice qualities to them, but maybe this one is kind of is kind of nice this one with the broken tree I like okay. that one the, for the color for the composition I like this one I think just to show that you can paint it'd be good to maybe put that one in okay um, so I'm just gonna stop screen sharing and oops thank you Okay, so um, you have the ability, what I would say is refining it a bit, and I'd like okay. to see some of that 3D modeling that you have, any of your computer skills, so that in medical illustration today, you need to show a couple things. One, that you can draw accurately, right, okay. and that you have good pencil skill. I would want to see your ink ability skill and better something that shows line drawing ability, um, different weights of line from thick to thin, being able to um, communicate an idea or a specimen clearly by how you use line weight. So okay. It's something that maybe you've done or you could show me or I could help you learn more specifically how to do that because one of the things with medical illustration it isn't just that we can draw the specimen accurately it's that we want to show what's the most important thing we want somebody to notice in this example so okay. it's a bit like architecture drawing or design drawing where 
oh, if we want them to look at a certain place, we're going to have a um, stronger line in that area. We're going to have weaker line where we don't want them to look. It's also a little bit similar to animation drawing where they try to create atmospheric perspective in how something's drawn so that okay. the most important uh, element is seen first. Okay. And um, so that's part of what you'd want to include. Like I said, any 3D modeling you have, any animations that you have, and then some specific examples, right, of um, subjects that would be drawn for medical illustration. So maybe it's okay. um, a view under a microscope. Maybe it's a cross-section of a plant or some type of organism that you've done a cut through. Okay. You might want to show a life cycle, right, of something. Okay. Okay. So that uh, so there's different that those kinds of things. What are the kinds of subjects that a medical illustrator would do? Or maybe it's a procedure, right? Explaining how a procedure is done. So okay. that those are things that you need to do so that some of your media arts and graphics skills are going to come into play. So that okay. communicating an idea and laying it out well. So one of the okay. things I had some of my medical illustration students do in the past is I'd say, okay, go find me an example of a really poorly done life cycle and then okay. redo that a lot better. <laughs> right? Okay. okay. You know, go find me a cross section that's poorly done and understand why is it poorly done and then do it better. Right? Okay. okay. So and there's loads of bad examples out there. Actually, okay. <laughs> because um, it's interesting, we seem to have this divide. We have people who are really great at science and medicine, right? And we have people who are really yeah. good at art. There's very few people who understand both. both and so, yeah. um, so this is a great thing, and it's easy to get work and good work if you understand both and how to communicate clearly. Okay. Uh, you know, you you will have work. Um, but also one of the problems is because there's so few schools um, that where you can study me medical illustration, it's also um, quite competitive, right? And we okay. generally see either people who are highly trained in this, the science end or people who are highly trained as illustrators applying. And where you have okay. a little bit of both, but you're not okay. at a high level skill on both. Okay. So what um, I would say start gathering what more of what you do have and find out more about when the, the deadline really is for that portfolio submission. And then I could okay. help you out uh, okay. if you're depending on the amount of time and depending on your budget, we can come up with some ideas of how to give you the training you need. Um, because I have, I used to teach illustration at Sheridan College. It's one of the one of the best arts colleges in Canada, and we did have a medical illustration sort of specialization in the final year if students chose to do that. We didn't have um, an actual medical illustration program, but we did have sort of where the the in their final year they could go that way. Um, okay. And I've created a private course for a few scientists in my city where they were kind of saying something similar. They love their science, but they're very creative people, and they weren't very happy in their careers just doing okay. science. So they would okay. be you know, in the lab and doing whatever, and then taking art classes just for enjoyment, and they realized, you know, yeah. we could put this together and have a career. And the other okay. thing they found, too, that as scientists, the work is not consistent, right? Having a contract. Okay is regularly is difficult sometimes, right? So okay. that we, we found for them, once they got their training in medical illustration, um, they were getting more contracts and they were getting hired even as lab technicians because they could also illustrate. So their okay. employment went up, so that's really great. Um, okay. And the one la lady, she was doing molecular biology and she was telling me that 
you know, the presentations by her colleagues are so poor. It, it just, they don't have graphic skills. They don't have good communication skills. They know their area of specialization, but they don't know how to show that. And there's a lot of times that you need to put a report together where you need to make a slide presentation or, you know, some kind of uh, presentation to a board or whatever. And uh, so she's been actually much better employed since she studied. Um, okay. So uh, what I would say to you, Rex, is put together some more of your work. Uh, do okay. what you can naturally. And okay. I'd like to stay in contact with you to have another look at your work to see okay. how you're doing naturally on your own. And I'll be able to see where you need some further education okay. to, to help you sort of streamline your portfolio um, okay. and get some skills where you really would need it. Just because okay. I think you're probably gonna be quite able considering the different types of training you've had when you put your mind to it. Um, okay. Even if you get a couple examples done and then send them to me, I'll be able to see whether you're going to need some help or whether you're in really good shape with the skill and knowledge you already have. Okay. okay. Does that sound like a good idea to you? Yes, it does. Okay. It does, yeah. But, um, with um, respect to the drawings, mm -hmm. yeah, um, I've never really done a lot of figure drawing and uh, I've not really, I don't really know much about it. I'm trying to, I, have, I got some books, mm -hmm. I'm studying, um, I'm just trying to do a little bit of study on my own. Mm -hmm. um, do I really need? Like, I, I I know I do need figure drawings. I mean, medical illustration is the body. So, how how deep do I need to go in figure drawings? Hmm. Well, I think that's one of the things that you may want to look at, or, or maybe call those schools and find out a little bit more from them. Because it depends, okay. again, uh, see if you can look into what um, are the courses that are offered at those two schools you're interested in. And okay. if you can get uh, the list of courses or the course descriptions, you're going to be able to see how important is human physiology to those programs. Because like, if you're going to be drawing um, you know, views under the microscope, then you know how is the the figures less important? If you're really interested okay. in the mechanics of the body and the, the muscle groups or the you know nervous okay. system, then it's more important. Ideally, you would have be able to draw the figure, and well, and you would be able to draw you know um, the different systems within the body. So we really have this whole it's the macrocosm and the microcosm. We want to be able to do the whole body from the exterior, okay. muscle group, skeleton, details. We want to be able to go into the systems and then we want to go in quite deep into um, looking at microscopic views. Um, so, but to get accepted, how much does it matter? I mean, I would see, like I say, what are they, what are they teaching there to find okay. out how much do you have to focus on that? Right? So okay. um, I think that would help to know that. Okay. And then you'll have a better idea okay. of you know how much you need to study that. I do think it's a good idea to uh, do some study of anatomy. Um, you know, in medical illustration, is it going to be important to be able to actually go to a figure drawing class? It would be great, but maybe it's not so critically important, but you could do some uh, anatomy study, okay. right? And I think you you draw well. Like, look at the the portrait and and the drawing of. Um, I'm not sure what kind of primate that was, but that was really great, right? Uh, Homo habilis, I think. So, um, <laughs> the you know, um, so ideally, yeah, do some life drawing. Take a figure drawing course if you can, if you have access to one, or an online course if you don't. Get out some book anatomy books out of the library and start doing some studies, both overall and you know some details, like you know drawing the hand, uh, and then looking at the, the structures inside of the hand. So finding a really good anatomy book would be great, and doing some work on that. 
Uh, so, okay. yeah, some, some anatomical drawings, both exterior view, like you have so far, um, overall okay. portion of the body, skeletal, muscular, you know, and then going into say, hey, maybe I'm going to draw one of the organs, I'm going to draw a body system of some kind, I'm going to look at some microscopic views, I don't know, life cycle of a parasite, what, okay. or a disease, you know, these kinds of things. So start okay. doing some drawings, and yeah, in both by hand, ink, pencil, color, on Illustrator, on Photoshop, do a 3D model of, of something where you're going to spin that that item and and look at it. Um, okay. Just you you know, and use the skills that you have because part of it could be you need to do if you're going to do a life cycle, you're going to lay out those illustrations and then you're going to label it clearly so that when somebody looks at that they understand what's being communicated about that so okay. and I think now because I taught a course on this I do have video footage of that course um, it hasn't okay. been edited yet um, okay. but if, there, if I start to see that there's certain areas in your ability where you're a bit um, need more learning I could say okay I'm gonna go and have those particular lessons edited so that you have access to that video learning right that could be a way you could do it um, okay. the other thing we could do is to schedule a private lesson just like we're doing now okay. you get some of your drawings done and then we look at them together online like this we can do a screen share and what I can do is draw over it. I've got, you know, one of those bamboo um, Wacom digitizing pads. So I can draw on top of your drawing and show you what okay. do we need to do differently here, okay. right? Okay. Um, there's a couple of other video lessons that could apply to what you need. Okay. Um, you know, they're not medical illustration, but they are about how do we uh, – make people look where we need them to look. So okay. there's lessons I've done with students about composition and the hierarchy of edges and contrasts. So understanding okay. that is important as a medical illustrator, you know, or a graphic designer, you know, really any type of art, how do I make sure somebody's looking where the number one message is? How do I know make them look at the number two message? How do I make them look at what they need to see that third? How do I make sure they're not distracted by something that's not important? And there's very specific ways to do that. So there are video lessons that you could rent so that you could learn that and then apply it to the work you're doing. Because so important in medical illustration is that the main the points are, are understood clearly and without effort. Right, because it's it's information that you're getting across. That you're instructing through an image, right? So it's very important um, in medical illustration to know as that illustrator how do you do that, right? To really understand people's vision, what grabs their attention um, effectively, right? Can you still hear me? Seems like we've paused. Hello, are you still there? Rex, can you hear me, Rex? You know, there's a chat bar. If you hover off to the left-hand side of the screen, there's a little blue icon called chat. And you can click that and write because it looks like your screen is frozen up. Um, so, oh, you just dropped off the call, I think. I'm going to re invite. Oh, there you are, Rex. So you're back. Hello, Rex. Can you hear me? Are you back, Rex? Um, no. Having a little problem with your internet, are you? 
gonna try reinvigorating you. All right, so, um, so Rex, uh, I don't know if you're gonna be able to rejoin me or not here. Um, I'm gonna send you the conversation we just had, and so that you can listen to this. So, hmm. uh, I type in my chat here that I will send you the video of this conversation we just had. Whoops, as well. Just had. There we go. Um, so to finish off, Rex, I, I don't know if you're going to be able to get back onto the call, but at least. Um, this is being recorded. So, Rex, what I'm going to finish off by saying to you, like I was mentioning, do some work with what I've told you already and uh, send me some work in the next few weeks that you create. And, um, and I'm going to send you a few videos uh, that are free for you to get started with. And I will email you a list of some recommendations, um, some videos that I have that you could rent. I'll tell you a little bit about um, having private lessons and how that can help and what the costs are. It's really, I try to make it very affordable for students um, so that you can easily afford to study and improve your work so you can go at to get into the program you really want. And I want you to know, Rex, that every student that has hired me has been accepted into their preferred college. And I'd really love to help you do that too. I think you are more able than you seem to realize. So, and I think once you put your mind to it and start doing drawings of that sort and, and studying um, in earnest over the next several months to create that portfolio, I think you're going to make something that's really remarkable and I do imagine you will be able to get accepted and I can help you hone what you've done so that you can have a successful career. Um, so yeah, it's been lovely to speak with you today. Sorry that you had to drop off there and um, stay in contact please. I'd love to see what you create and let you know how I can help or where you don't need help, right? So. Anyway, um, good luck there, and so isn't it wonderful that we can talk over such a distance? Um, so I gather you're in Ghana, and uh, I hear it's quite a beautiful part of Africa. So, because uh, I had a, a woman staying with me who is a professor from the university there in, in Ghana, and um, she was at University of Guelph here where I am for a little while and uh, rented an apartment from me. She's a lovely woman with lots of great stories. Anyway, so it sounds uh, like a wonderful place that you live there, from what she told me. Anyhow, bye now, and we'll talk again sometime, okay? Bye, Rex.